All right, everyone. So now to the fun part. Now we're going to learn that how we can perform operations like persisting our movie, getting the movie, movie by ID, deleting the movie, updating the movie, all of that stuff. Now, since we're simply learning how to interact with Fluent and Vapor in Swift, I'm just going to add all of the code in routes. Okay. When we are building our actual project, then we will use controllers. So we will have to do all of the things that we have learned again, but that time in the future when we are doing the project, we will be working in a Swift UI applications. We will be jumping back and forth between the backend and the UI, backend and the UI. So I'm going to remove these routes. Okay. So right now our only mission, only task is can we create a route which we can use Postman to invoke and how can we persist information in the Postgres database. That's only the thing that we're trying to do. That's why I'm not creating any controllers. We will create controllers when we're doing the project. So the first task is to obviously to create a movie. How can we create a movie? So app.post because we will be posting information to the route called movies. So this means that we are posting something uh, we will get the request, it can throw, and in the request body, we will have all the information to create the movie. So probably we will only have the title of the movie because that's the only thing that is required to create a movie. So we'll do request.content.decode and we can decode it to the movie type. Now, if you're trying to decode it to the movie type and the movie type is right over here, we may need to make sure that it is conforming to content, which it is currently not. This is what we learned in the previous lecture that if you conform to content, then it becomes encodable and decodable. So we will also need to perform or conform to content as well as the model because model is used for the fluent. Let's go back. So this is going to give us a particular movie. It's going to construct a movie based on what you're actually sending. All right. Let's try to save the movie. Movie dot save on request dot db. Not body, db. And now we can go ahead and await on it. We still need to return something. So we'll simply go ahead and return the saved movie. The movie that you just saved we're just going to return that and that's it. That's all the code that you need to decode the movie into a movie object and then save the movie. So in order to save the movie, we are simply calling the save function. How do we get this save function? Well, we're getting it from our movie object because our movie class conforms to the model. And this gives us all the different superpowers associated with saving a movie, deleting a movie, all those things. Let's go back. Now we need a way to invoke this route. And we'll be using Postman. And eventually, when we get to a point of the project, then we'll be using, obviously, our Swift UI application. So let me go ahead and run the server. Once the server is running, we should go ahead and try to uh, save the movie. Now, again, it's saying something about the custom directory, which is kind of weird because I thought I fixed that, but uh, let's go ahead and fix that. I think we never really ran the server, and that's why it's giving us that information. So let me go ahead and fix this problem. So in order to fix this issue, I'm just going to go to my movies app, edit the scheme, and in the run scheme, you can see right there, working directory. Just going to go ahead and click use working directory and pass in the name of my working directory. So my working directory, meaning my project, is on desktop inside the folder called Movies app. So I'm just going to go ahead and pass that path. And that's it. Let's go ahead and run the server again now. OK, server is running. That's good. Let's copy this. And we'll be using Postman. So let's go to the Postman or any other networking tool. Now over here, watch very carefully because a lot of people make so many mistakes in Postman. The first thing I'm going to do is put the URL of the movies. Since we are invoking the post request, we need to change it to post. 
And this is the number one mistake that people do. Headers, you need to set the headers also. Content type, application JSON. Very important, right? Most of the people, they just miss the headers and they're like, oh, it's not working. Make sure you have headers. Body, raw. Raw simply means that I'm going to be typing in raw JSON, valid JSON. So what exactly are we trying to send? Well, a movie can have a title because it, I believe it has a property called title and now the value of the title. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say Batman. That's the only property in our movie, right? So I'm just gonna go ahead and send it and see. If I get back a movie with an ID and all the other properties, then it means that it was successful. Okay, we get something back auto-generated ID of the movie and the title. Because if you remember, we are saving the movie and sending back the same movie that was saved. Let's check in our database. Did it even go to the database or not? So on the database, I'm just gonna go ahead and select movies. I mean, you can write a simple query over here, like select all from movies. And there we go, awesome we were able to save our movie to the database, the Batman movie. Now, obviously, if you want to send something else, like if you want to go ahead and save another movie like Spider-Man, let's go ahead and send it, Iron Man, Superman, and so on, you can go ahead and send those and save those movies. Let's go ahead and see how many movies do we have. Yeah, we have a lot of movies now. That's pretty good. Okay, so we have successfully saved the data in our movies table. It's hosted on Elephant SQL, but it can be hosted anywhere. And all we need to do is to write this small bit of code. The next part is we will learn how to get the movies, all of the movies and get the movies by ID and also delete the movies. We'll also learn about updating the movie. So a lot of different things coming in the future. All right, so let's go to the next lecture. This video is brought to you by my latest course, Mastering Full Stack iOS Development Using Swift UI and Vapor. This is a 12 hour course, which takes you on a journey of creating a full stack application. This means that you are not only going to learn the Swift UI, which is the client side, but you're also going to be learning about the server side, you will create your own server using Vapor and you will integrate it with Postgres database. You will also learn about MongoDB protecting route authentication using JWT deployment middleware, so much more, so much more. This is a complete course. If you wanted to learn full stack development, then this is the only course you need. 12 hour course, already have 200 plus students registered. If you want to register for this course, then check out the YouTube description. There's a link and click on that link. Use that link to register and enroll in this course. Thank you so much. Let's get back to the video. In the last lecture, you learn about how to create a movie by using the post action. Now let's go ahead and see how we can get all the movies. We will create a route for get movies. It's a get route for movies. This means that we can simply go to slash movies and get our movies. We will get the access to the request. Async throws if it actually throws. And now we can call movie dot query on the request. So request dot db and calling the all function. You can see that as I start typing the all function, the one that we want to use is the async one because we are using the async closure over here. And it's gonna return us an array of movies, which is exactly what we want. So just gonna go ahead and call all. And since it's in async, we have to await and it can also throw. So we're gonna go ahead and use try, okay? And let's go ahead and run the application. Now we may already have some movies stored in our database, which is hosted on Elephant SQL. So we're just gonna go ahead and go to a route for movies 
and see if we can get all the movies. So the route is the same. The only difference is that it is using the get HTTP method. And there we go. We got a couple of different movies over here. You can see sometimes, I mean, not sometimes, because I added Superman twice. So now it's returning. So it's coming from the database. Superman, Superman, Superman. I think I added it multiple times. Not a big deal. And we have Batman, Spider-Man, Iron Man. Okay. So we have all of these different movies. Let's go ahead and add another movie over here. Instead of Spider-Man, which is already there, how about if I add uh, Aquaman or something? Okay, let's go and fetch it. And let's see if we have a comment right there at the bottom. So this means that it is going all the way to the database and it is getting the movies from the database. Now, sometimes we want to get a single movie. And the best way to get a single movie, if you want to get the exact movie, is by using the ID of the movie, which is the primary key. In those cases, I'm going to say app.get movies. And basically, the type of the URL that we're trying to create is that you can pass in the ID right there, whatever the ID is. In our case, the ID is basically all of that stuff. So this is the ID for the Batman. And each ID for each movie will be different. It's kind of like your social security number. If you're from U United States, US, you will be issued a social security number, which is a unique ID for you. In order to do this kind of a URL, we're going to use the route parameters. I can use request async throws. And now I can go ahead and get the movie. I can use some of the helper functions of the movie uh, uh, entity that we created. And one of those is the find function. You can see that in the find function, we can pass in the ID. And it's going to return us that particular movie. So we can look into request.parameters.get. And since we said that our parameter name is ID, that is what we're going to pass in over here. For the database, we're going to go ahead and say request.db. It's already in the db. Guard let movie. And else, if something went wrong, maybe you were not able to find that particular ID or something, then we can go ahead and throw an exception of bad request. If the movie was found, then we are going to return the movie. And that's it. Make sure that we are using try await because find is an async function and it can throw an exception. I'm going to go ahead and run this again now. We already have the ID of the movie. So if I go and simply plug in the ID over here in the route parameter, I should be able to get a single movie. And I believe that will be Batman because that's the ID of the Batman movie. If I mess around with this ID and change this ID so that it doesn't exist, then I get the error saying bad request. If I remove the ID, then it will go to a route for the movies and it will give me all the movies. If I go ahead and copy the ID of Iron Man and pass in that particular ID, then I get Iron Man. Okay. So you can see that when you're using the new syntax of async and await with your Vapor projects, it actually becomes really, really simple and intuitive to get the movie to get all the movies, to, you know, get the movie by an ID, and so on. In the next lectures, we'll be looking at deleting the movie as well as updating the movie.